Good Wednesday morning. This is Dr. Bill Williams on the Influencers Podcast, and I'm so pleased to have you in the audience today all around the world, coming in from 200 countries, listening in, finding out the gems that we have to share. And today we have a very exciting time with Stacy North, ad expert, publisher advocate at the AdOps Agency. So she's in California. I want to bring her on right now. Welcome, Stacy. Uh, thank you so much, Bill. How are you today? Good. Got a good three mile walk in this morning at 645. Yeah, I do that I'm as ready. well. <laughs> you ready to rock and roll? Having a good day. Uh, the, the rain's coming here to Georgia. And so I don't know if I'll be able to get out in the middle of the rain the rest of the week. So I'm glad I've got three days of, of good exercise in. Maybe I got enough to last me for the rest of the week. Yeah, that's a good way to start your day. Where did you say you lived in California now? I'm in Orange County, Southern Orange County. So Orange County, I, I'm almost exactly halfway in between San Diego and Los Angeles. That must be God's country. You're you're close to Santa Barbara. Uh, not drive. Yes, yes, yes. It's considerably close, but it's not uh, something you would drive on every day or anything like that. But yes, because it could take three hours to get to Los Angeles, and then you got another couple after that to get to Santa Barbara. Wow. So that's a, it's a large, long coast. It is. a Yes, exactly. That's that's the problem. And the traffic. <laughs> but all um, down the coast, it's gorgeous. I uh, pinch myself every day that I get to live here. Excellent. I, I've been to San Diego, Santa Barbara, Los Angeles, uh, up and down the coast near and San Francisco and Sacramento. So I've, I've been up and down the coast and it is a long coast. So <laughs> I took the drive one time from Los Angeles down to Orange County, which would take about an hour. It took three on PCH. Oh my gosh. I did it for everyone that no one else has to do that ever. Again. It took three hours. Yeah. You can't go across Atlanta in an hour. So I know Los Angeles is even worse. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's very uh, traffic. It, there's a lot of traffic. Everyone, that's what they're known for and amongst other things. Well, let's talk about you and your business. Uh, where were you when you got started? What happened to get you going as an ad expert? Uh, well, I had spent many years in corporate America and I was working for uh, Experian at the time. Um, people were leaving um, as they do and they would come back and ask me if I consulted and I just said no. It was an automatic no. And after a few times, I said yes. And it was uh, it was life changing because I, I I never really even thought about it, never even thought it would be an option. And so when I said yes, I started kind of moonlighting at lunches and after work. And that's how the AdOps agency was born. And then a few short months after I started doing that, um, I left Experian full time and dove right in to the AdOps agency and haven't looked back since. You, you talked to me about what you do earlier. And I was struck by the fact that you represent the side that most people don't. So talk about your your ad advocacy. How do, how do you set your business up? Yeah, so well, I originally started, uh, you know, let's, let's move back to what is ad operations because most people have never even heard the term ad ops or ad operations um, until you actually need it. Um, so, and I hadn't either. I started back in 2009 and I didn't know what it was, but instantly fell in love and very detail oriented. And so it was the perfect fit for me in terms of my skill set. And so I started on the publisher side. So I started with a large network, um, uh, a women's uh, site publisher, online publisher called She Knows. Um, and so started really just at the at the bottom understanding things and, and just kind of grew. So that's the sell side of things. And a lot of people they go to websites all the time and they see the ads, but they don't understand really what kind of goes into that. So all the coding and the ad setup and everything like that from, from setup to, you know, campaign management is really what I uh, have managed in the past. So um, it does tend to be a little code heavy. Um, I've been lucky to have some uh, people help me along the way in that. I'm not a coder 
uh, by choice or by trade, but um, you have to know a little bit about it or a lot about it to, to troubleshoot. So, and then once I got into, once I moved out to California, that I was in Arizona while that happened. And my mentor at the time had said, well, if you really like this, you should probably be in New York or California. And so I did that, <laughs> moved to California and worked for um, Clear Channel. And then I worked for Experience, uh, Experian. And that's when I um, ended up on the buy side of things. So media buying. And a lot of people are very familiar with that because it's, hey, I'm going to buy your media, whether it's programmatically or SEM or anything like that. And I was given a great opportunity to manage the ad operations team over there uh, and ad operations and platforms. Um, as everyone knows, uh, the digital marketing world is uh, is bundled with tons of platforms. And so I was able to manage, you know, the SEM efforts, the SEO efforts, affiliate display, um, you name it. It, it. it kind of ran. So that kind of really helped me do the buy side of things. So when I went out on my own, I was able to reach out to both sides. Um, I will say that the money tends to be on the buy side because that's where the advertiser is. Um, but that also uh, allowed me to help be a publisher advocate because I understand both sides of it. And I understand how much the advertisers are paying and how little the publisher is getting when they serve that ad. So um, to kind of bring that full circle, ad operations takes care of all of the ad serving, whether it's tracking or setting up code or anything like that, both on the publisher side as well as the buy side. Were you able to, uh, 30,000 foot overview, understand where the money flows in that transaction and able to cut out a lot of the middlemen as part of an advocate program? So uh, I like to, I'm also a middleman. So I, I like to tell people right up front, I also am a middleman, but I'm, uh, I treat you or I like to take every client as if it were my own business to give them sound advice as so that they can um, keep as much money in their pocket as possible. Yes, the month there, I mean, it's uh, as many platforms as there are, there's probably more middlemen who want to take the money um, as it flows through to the publisher. And the publisher is really the person who takes all of the risk, 100% of the risk. They're the ones who um, have to keep up content. Content, keeping that up is um, very, very expensive. And so, um, yeah, the, the publisher takes 100% of the risk, but gets kind of the short end of the stick, I would say, as the money flows through all those middlemen. So I'm very upfront. I'm also a middleman, but I want to help that help guide them uh, in a way that will um, preserve as much money as possible. <laughs> in, a, in a land of need, where you need a middleman, you want to be the best middleman there is. Exactly. I Yes, exactly. So I try to be that to them. I, I know what's going on. I know both sides and I, I try to explain it as, as uh, coherently as possible so that they understand how to move forward. Now, in your business, you've seen a lot of things happen that worked well and a lot of things that didn't work well. Share with us one that didn't work, work so well and what you learned from it. Yeah, so uh, there have definitely been clients that I've had that didn't, uh, didn't, we didn't mesh. We did, it did, wasn't a long term, it wasn't a love story or anything like that. And I would say, um, I, I don't mind working with um, other countries. I just think that time zone thing is very hard when I'm in California and somebody is eight, nine, 10. So I do get requests from um, people in, in UK and Europe and Australia and other countries. I, I try to stay away from those. The language barrier and how things work over in America is much different than those other countries and the expectations are also different. And so I try to really keep focus on uh, business in the United States. I will help every once in a while. Um, it's not that I don't like it, but I think the expectations need to be set up front. Excellent advice. Now, what about general failures that you see people making in the ad buying business? Uh, so early on, uh, I would, as most young companies will do, I would take almost any client 
<laughs> without um, doing my due diligence. And, you know, I just wanted to work with people and help people. And that's where it came from. Not because I wanted, it wasn't a ton of money anyway, but I think um, especially on the publisher side of things, where I think publishers go wrong is they think that it's a ton of money on the publisher's side <laughs> and they don't realize how difficult it is. Um, and you would know this out of anybody, how difficult it is to get an audience on a, on a website or anywhere else. You have to have a unique story um, or a lot of money behind it in order to garner that type of audience. And so oftentimes I offer a free 30 minute consultation to not only vet them, but give them some free advice if they just aren't ready for um, to work with somebody like me. Uh, the last thing I want to do is spend somebody's last dollar. So there, a lot of people will talk about uh, minimums and stuff like that. It's not a minimum to work with me, but if you want to make money, I'm giving you sound ROI advice not to work with me if you're not ready. So that would be one of the biggest reason pe reasons people fail. They they see the end before they get start <laughs> the hard work at the very beginning, which is you got to build that audience. So um, a million, I would say, make sure you have at least a million page views a month uh, before you kind of go out on your own. I do other, I provide other device, uh, advice for smaller companies, but it's not a consultation. Um, so that, I think that's the top reason most publishers fail is that they just don't, they don't know what goes into being a publisher uh, full time. It's very difficult. They're walking on unfamiliar ground and uh, your, your sage advice is from experience, you know, what they need to have to start. Yes. And I'm happy to talk to all those people. I love talking to people and I love connecting, but I usually with somebody too small, go build your audience. I will, I would love to work with you. Come back when you have, you know, a million page views or something. It's not because I, you know, don't want to work with you. I just don't want you to waste your money on me. There's, it just doesn't make any sense. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, what motivates you internally to um, keep going and doing this job? <laughs> well, I, I happen to be one of the very, very, very few people who loves ad operations. Now you'll never hear somebody say that. Um, no. I loved it from the beginning. Yes, it is a perfect fit for my skill set. And so, no, ad operations is typically an entry level position. And so, uh, for that's one reason people don't usually want to stick with it because the money isn't there. Uh, but the other reason is, you know, they want to move out of, of, of that position. They don't want to ever, you know, stay in an entry level position for money or for, you know, uh, resume building purposes. They want to move up. No, I still don't quite understand why <laughs> uh, ad operations is an entry-level position. And that's partly why I'm here today and I have my own business is that I felt it was um, worth more than entry-level pay. And I'm often the person providing the advice downwards. Um, and and uh, without seeing both sides, I think it's difficult to get a, a good end product without, without the expertise, you're just hoping things don't go wrong. And that's a big gamble when, especially on the buy side of things, when you're spending millions and millions of dollars every year of at an agency. So you're kind of taking a gamble there on an entry level person, not to mess up. Absolutely. I think your, your wisdom shows up and people are actually purchasing your wisdom when they contract <laughs> with you. Yep. What about your company motto? Uh, Ad ops done right. <laughs> done right. <laughs> it's done right. You know, that could, yeah. That could fit in dentistry too. Dentistry yeah. done right. <laughs> for, Nobody it for, that, for sure. We've all been to a bad dentist, I think. <laughs> um, Give me your top three success secrets that people can use to model from. Um, I would say, uh, especially with your own business, you're going to mess up. You're going to mess up big. <laughs> it's going to happen. Um, keep going. You remember why you started it and why you get up every day. So that's the first thing. Um, just keep going. You're going to mess up. Own up to it. Accountability is everything. 
just uh, lean into that one and just say, I totally messed up. You're going to lose clients. You're going to lose clients whether or not you messed up. <laughs> so um, that's, you know, I think that is. Change think, happens. Absolutely. So I think that's, uh, that's number one. Number two is uh, don't, I worked very hard, but it's only sustainable for a short period of time. Get help. Get help, however that is. It, 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 you know, you can't do it all. Although I, I'm pretty sure I, I, I thought I could <laughs> yeah. at the beginning. Um, I've only recently started uh, reaching out for help, but reach out for help because it, it, you need it. And then talk to people. Talk, talk to people. Don't get so isolated, especially in today's world where we're all working from home. Talk to people and make sure that you're still. Uh, relevant. Um, those, all of those have nothing to do with, you know, why I'm actually successful, but I think all of that is a good foundation um, on top of the skill that you bring to your business. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Success secrets in your business are very similar to dentistry. We have a term called silo dentist where they just kind of solo practice. They only, they only have themselves to talk to and, uh, they sometimes lose their track of their self-worth because they, f they feel beat down all the time. It's like, you got to take a break. You got to go out and meet other people. Absolutely. Go to yeah. get, go to networking events, not because you want to get business, but because you want to talk to people. <laughs> you know, we don't have the business. We don't have that office environment anymore. Get out there and go network again, not because you think that you're going to get business. That could be a result, but, so that you can go and make friends and not feel so isolated. That's for mental health, right? Absolutely. So tell us, uh, Stacy, why should somebody buy from you as opposed to somebody else that calls themselves a, an ad expert? Uh, well, so there's a lot of people out there who will tell you what you want to hear. There's a lot of people out there who will do that. Um, I'm kind of a straight shooter. I will probably tell you a lot of things that you don't want to hear. <laughs> um, but I treat everyone as if it were my own business. I try to really, really step into, you know, understanding their business. If I don't, I usually won't. If, if I'm not able to do that, I usually won't work with them or it's not going to work out. And I've found that from the past. If I don't really understand their motivation or their goals, um, it's going to be very difficult to, to help them. So I try to really, really, really get in and um, understand the person I'm working with, the business, and how I would uh, approach it if it were my own. And so I don't, I think a lot of people are really, really focused on making money and they see just dollar sign, you know, they see another client, it's a dollar sign. And I yeah. see it. Yep, exactly. And it's yeah, they come. that that comes, that is a result and that's great. But um, I, I think you really got to focus on why you're there and it's to help them. And that's, I, I really think that that's truly why I've been very successful at what I do. Yeah. My wife worked in the dental practice with me for 35 years and said, take care of the people, the money will come. Absolutely. And we always taught our staff when they were selling dentistry, talking about things to people say, just tell them what you would do if it was your mouth. You don't have to create anything that's not real. Just say, what would be the best for you if it was your mom or your wife that's or right. yourself? That's right. Absolutely. Like, would you, would you do that? Would you do that procedure on your, on yourself or your daughter or your, whoever it is? Same thing. Would I do this for my own business? Um, despite what the money is all about. Stacy, tell us who your ideal client would be. Hmm. That's a good one. Uh, my ideal client is somebody who knows that they can't do it on their own, that they really, really, truly want an expert to come in and help them. And um, it's not, hey, I expect, uh, you know, I expect somebody at a, at a discounted price. Um, you know, because again, the stigma with ad operations is that it's an entry level position. And there are lots of people overseas that will charge you very little to do, but it's not in a, a consultative approach. 
Um, they will they will do what you tell them to do. And one of the things that I uh, just am totally against is being a ticket taker. I often am able to tell them why what they're trying to do should not be done. <laughs> and here's why. So obviously I'm a doer and everything like that. But if, if something doesn't make sense, I let them know. So I, uh, I need a client who's able to work with that, who, who's, who's open to being like, okay, we know that we don't know everything about this. And most people just hate ad operations. And so I, I want them to be able to listen to me being in this business going on 15 years. So how do you go about finding these ideal clients that you want? I have been very, very blessed. I would say uh, even from the beginning when I started, I got some big names. Um, you know, I ended up working with Urban Dictionary almost right out of the right out of the gates when uh, the ad ops agency started back in 2015, 2016. Um, and then I worked uh, very closely with the Motley Fool, and then I worked with Daily Wire. So I was able to build some of these, uh, some of the revenue for these companies. Uh, and and that helped, I think, from, in addition to word of mouth, I think I'm doing for myself what I do for my, my clients, which is, you know, I'm available when they need me, um, whether it be through search or anything like that. Um, LinkedIn, Upwork, um, Google Ads, that type of thing. Uh, so I, I think I do for myself what I do for others, and that's kind of how they find me. Um, so, yeah. I know I know. I see lots of great ads from um, Motley Fool. So they, those guys have quite a reputation for uh, novelty. Yes, absolutely. What's your well-defined product or service? Uh, well, I I help whether it be a publisher, publisher, advertiser, agency. I am able to help them implement ads, whether it be code on a publisher's website or through a tracking ad server like DCM, also known as CM360, Campaign Manager, D DFA. So I'm an expert in a, a lot of the... Google suite of products, uh, whether that be Google ads, um, Google ad manager, Google campaign manager, 360, Google analytics, Google tag manager, um, any, all of those happen to be very, I don't want to say complicated, but most business owners, they don't have time to go figure that stuff out. Um, I've been doing it for 15 years. I'm an expert. Um, I can usually jump in and be like, okay, here's what needs to be done. I, there isn't a whole lot of training that needs to be done. When I white label my services, for example, for agencies, there's no train the, other than internal processes and communications and that type of thing. There's no training to be done. It's, uh, it's very streamlined. Uh, so if somebody needs help with ad server work or any of the Google products, um, that's what I help with because it's a, it can be a very complicated world, especially with the new Google analytics that it was released in the last year. People were, you know, the old one is now shut off. It's, it's a complicated world out there. So I try to help guide and untangle the stuff that people just don't have time to do on their own. Well, I know from my personal experience that some of these programs are very complicated and you, you, as a, a novice trying to get into them, you really spin in your wheels and you, you really need an expert to take yes. over. It's yes. not something you want to learn on your own. It's well, you can, but uh, at some point you're going to hit a wall. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I see. It's like, I mean, okay, I, we're done. <laughs> I don't know what to do anymore. And that's when you start going to search for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Just as an example, I was a, a webmaster for five years Oh wow! for, for okay. other dentists and, uh, I had a lot of knowledge about HTML, but you know, there was a time when I started in 1997 doing websites, but by uh, 2003, things were moving along and changing. And um, it was not a simple process of just using front page. Yes, right. Exactly. I've used front page. I know exactly what you're talking about. No, 
so different. It changed in like 2007-ish, I would say. Yeah. As soon as, you know, Java became common and then uh, Flash and then more, it was beyond what a dentist should be doing. Yes. And I, and I said, that's enough. I'm going to hire real people to do real, real yeah. web design now. Yep. But you got, you got great experience from it. I, I also did from front page. It, it definitely uh, helped spawn my code interest. Yeah. Well, I had the number one website in, in uh, Georgia for dentists for a decade, just because I started first and I never let up. Yes. That's the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Things you like that make a difference, you know? Absolutely. Tell us what you're grateful for today, Stacy. Hmm. Oh my gosh, there's so much. <laughs> uh, I'm grateful that I woke up healthy. I get to come to work every single day. I get to live in California. Uh, it really is everything. I think if if you aren't grateful every day for everything, um, I think it makes things much more difficult. Though it, you're going against the grain. No. Can you do that 100 percent of the time? I don't think so. I think that it, you know, it's an up and down type of thing. But there's something to be grateful. Everyone has something to be grateful for every day. If you wake up, that's it. Should be your number one focus is let's uh, let's show our gratitude and and it makes the day and life so much better. <laughs> now, are you close to the coast so you can go out and run on the beach, or are you back away and and go to the coffee shop instead. Mm, pretty, I'm 20 minutes away. I I, I do wake up uh, a little early and also do some some running. But I usually we've got some great trails in the in the city that I live in, and so uh, I, I like the the elevations. It really can challenge you, uh, get your heart rate up. So I just run locally around here. Very nice. Um, what would you say would be your long-term goal? What are you looking for in the rest of your life? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I would love to, I think when this first started, I, I was very happy with it just being me. And, <laughs> and it was like, okay. I, and it goes back to the previous answer of like, okay, that's great. I did this all by myself, but now I want to kind of share that. I, I think the proof of concept has has ended. And now I'm kind of ready to take this up to everybody to say, Hey, you don't need to go find another ad ops person. The ad ops agency can help you. You don't, it's a revolving door because again, being the entry level position that it is, people don't want to stay there. So it's one, two years max. And then they've got to train and hire, hire and train somebody else. Um, I want to end that cycle. So I would love to, I think it's time, I want to go growth mode now. I would love to um, be a, a bigger player <laughs> than I am now. And I want to. I want people to recognize that work that I've done um, in terms of like, yes, this is a sound, you know, there's plenty of outsourced uh, companies that you can go to. There aren't a lot on the buy side for white labeling ad operations, US-based. And I'm, I, I am, I don't, I don't normally outsource, never outsource to, to outside the U.S. I hire only U.S. employees. Um, and I, I kind of hesitated there, but I, I hired somebody and have, still work with them. They were stationed over in uh, the U.K. Uh, while their wife was finishing up their doctorate. But um, U.S. based is, is really kind of how it's a it's a different world. And I need people to realize that it's it's not a front to back. It's a back to front type of thing. And so I, I really, I want, I want the agencies to realize that they have an expert out there who's ready to take this on for them. And it's usually, you know, less expensive than hiring that entry level uh, person, just because we're experts and we know how to do it quickly. And we don't, you don't, it's something you don't ever have to think about again. So I really, I really want to grow this. I hope that it's something that at some point I can, uh, my my daughter can work here and have a, a job if she wants it. Um, or, you know, possibly look to merge with a, a larger company um, who would also see that vision. Sounds good. Sounds like you've got a, a game plan and uh, you're selling peace of mind is what it tells me. Mm, well, thank you. I try to. Yes. I want them to think that I, I, you don't have to worry about this anymore. 
who wants to worry about hiring? And to be quite honest, I love it so much. It's hard for me to understand why people don't like it, but I, I understand. I've got the skill set. I've got the, you know, I'm very detailed. I'm kind of a perfectionist. And so it, it fits well with me. Not a lot of people want to do that. So I understand that. And I didn't fully understand how scarce the AdOps resources are until I started looking for help on my own and was like, well, how do I scale what I've got? Because like I said, the POC is done. I know that I've got something here, but it really is difficult to find people who either, you know, you go for the entry level right out of college and you don't know if they're going to like it. And so all of a sudden I'm in the same revolving door that uh, the agencies are in. And I don't want to be stuck there, but I've, you know, um, I've got a tried and true training. Um, so it's really just about finding the person who has the same kind of traits that I have to um, let, to have them love it as much as I do. So I want to take care of it for everybody. And I, I think I can do it better than they're doing it for themselves. Beautiful. Sounds good. Sounds just like the problem dentists have with transitioning their practice and scaling. And, you know, it's very common for a dentist to bring his son in. Yes. yes. That very reason. A family affair. Absolutely. Son or daughter now. Yeah. <laughs> when I was in dental school, 60 people in my class, five were women. Now, 55% are women, 45% are men. That's insane. I, I hear dentistry is very difficult to get into in terms of uh, getting into a program around uh, the United States. Anyway, I hear a lot of people go to other countries to get it, but I, I know several dentists or dental hygienists that it's not, it's a, one of the most difficult practices to get into. It is. It's uh, very surveys will tell you it's the most desired profession to be in. Uh, well, short, short, short of being a baseball superstar <laughs> right. or a Hollywood movie, you know, yeah. premiere artist. But, you know, those, those are hit or miss. The thing about dentistry is about 99% of them are successful. So well, that's it, a good, that's a good success rate right there. It's not like you, you have a choice of being uh, eliminated by the coach because you're just not good enough. Yes, exactly. Well, and I think, you know, to some degree, that's, uh, I share that, you know, starting mm -hmm. your own business, anyone who has their, no, you're going to fail. Certainly you can fail and close shop and everything. But if, if you want it badly enough, and you're going to work hard enough. Yeah. There's not anyone else who can, you know, shut that down for you unless you just don't have a marketable product or service. Yeah, that's exactly right. So what advice would you uh, give a 20 year old, uh, Stacy looking back at your life? <laughs> A lot. Where do I start? Um, I would say relax, relax a little bit. It's okay. You don't have to achieve everything right away. I think, uh, I think I did that a lot. I just wanted to rush through everything to get to, to the top. And, um, it's just not going to happen how you planned it. <laughs> you just can't, you can't plan as much as you would like to, as much as everyone would like to, uh, you can have goals that you want to achieve, but planning your life is the surest way to make sure it doesn't happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would say just relax, have fun. Don't, don't try to be, um, you know, the, the know-it-all. Um, I, you know, I think I did that a lot when I was younger of, Oh, I know the answer. I want, you know, I'm always raising my hand in class. I know it. I know it. I know, you know, so uh, relax a little bit. Starting at the bottom does have its benefits. It does. Well, it, it is true what they say is that it's it's way more fun because you don't care as much necessarily, right? You're all grown up when you met, you're like, okay, now I've got all this stuff. I've got all these responsibilities. When you're young, you're still, you know, free uh, from many, many burdens that come later on in life, which are great burdens to have, but you're, you know, unencumbered by anything. Uh, enjoy it. Just enjoy it and enjoy the perks. You know, I used to, before ever getting into this business, I, I was in the travel and tourism industry and I, I did that. I used to say, and I think for the perks, like if you can't make a lot of money, go for the perks. <laughs> <laughs> the perks are the people. That's, that's what you do. There you go. 
Now, you're an expert, and so I want to pick your brain on a couple of points here. Uh, pay digital media. Uh, a lot of people put a lot of money out for media. Can you give us some percentages of revenue people should be putting into Facebook, uh, Google, or LinkedIn ads? Yeah, so it's probably uh, yeah, one of the questions I get quite often because nobody really understands. So I think it depends on what it is that you that you're selling or, or whatever it is. So I, I would say as long as you're positive on your ROAS, which is your return on ad spend, um, and you have, so I recently spoke with uh, a client or a, a future client and they were like, how much do I spend? I said, well, how much do you got? So that is kind of the, the answer, but it has to be strategic. So you have to understand Am I trying to brand as well as, um, you know, as a well thought out, already well branded product or service, you, you have a leg up and you won't have to spend as much. If you're starting a new franchise like uh, like this client is um, and no one's ever heard of it, you're going to spend a whole lot more money branding um, than you are bringing in kind of that direct response. Everyone wants that direct response. Like I want to be able to go out, spend my marketing money and be able to tell how many clients I got from that, your customer acquisition costs. And it just isn't that simple, especially when you have to do some branding. So if you have to do branding, you're going to spend a little bit more and you may spend a whole lot more, uh, 50% uh, of your budget, if you will, um, until you get to a place where you've done your branding job and it, that never really ends, but it does decrease as you go, as, as you become a household name. Um, I don't need to tell anybody what a Kleenex is <laughs> anymore. So now I just need to make sure you buy my product, the, you know, my Kleenex. And Kleenex isn't even, that, that was a brand itself. But so, um, yeah, you're going to spend a lot more if you have to, if you have to pump it into some branding. If you're truly just doing direct response and you're looking for that acquisition, um, it, you're probably already in a very competitive space, so you need to be competitive with your pricing. It is all about how much do you have and how much ROAS can you get. And ROAS is very similar to ROI. It just takes the ad spend into consideration in terms of that, and then the formula is just a little bit different. But um, yes, I would say don't break the bank on advertising and put in what you can. I actually don't do a ton of advertising. I just do it well. Strategic targeted. Yes, exactly. You have to find that. And, you know, many people will come at you like, oh, here, advertising here, do this, do that, do this, do that. You got to really think about what it is that's going to work. I'm not opposed to try trial and error. A lot of this is very iterative through testing of what's going to work. But I'm, I am, yeah, one of one of the people I worked with back at Experian say fail fast. And I think that's great advice. Don't spend too much money uh, by failing forever, <laughs> or else you're out, of, out of business. A B test it right away. Absolutely, get get immediate feedback. Make sure you're able to measure. That's one of the most important things, and that's where you know I, the ad ops agency comes in is that I can help you properly measure it. Garbage in, garbage out in terms of data. Make sure everything is. I used to call myself, which is kind of funny talking to you. I used to call myself the uh, data hygienist to make sure <laughs> all of the data was. I used to have the the domain clean, and they never did anything clean data. That. Yeah. So clean data, you have to have it to understand what's working and what isn't, but everything is so complicated now what's connected and how, how do I do that? And so the ad ops agency kind of helps you figure out all of that kind of stuff and what you should spend. Pretty good. I like it. Um, data hygienist. Perfect. Okay. What do you want to be remembered for being a data hygienist or something else? Uh, I think, you know, that's a hard one. I, I want to be remembered for bringing uh, a solution to the to the marketplace that somebody actually wanted. Somebody, you know, there's so much, there's so many products and services out there that it's like, okay, sure, why not? No, I want somebody to say, that was the best decision we made. <laughs> we, you know, we no longer have to worry about that anymore. So yeah, I, you know, we're in the background. We don't 
you know, we're, we're not, we're not trying to be stars at your company or anything like that. We just want to allow you to do what, focus on what you need to do. And so I want to be remembered for bringing a product service, whatever, whatever you want to call it to the people who actually really, really need it. What about your, um, company, um, what is the way we reach you? How can we support you? How do you get your people to connect to you? Yeah. So you can go to my website, adopsagency.com. And again, adopts is not a very common word. A-D-O-P-S agency.com. Um, go there. I'm happy to, uh, to extend a half hour free consultation um, to talk about your goals, see how the adopts agency can help or possibly, you know, lead you in the right direction. Um, so email me at expert at adopsagency.com. Uh, mention the podcast and we'll set you up with a, a time so that we can go through what it is you want to accomplish. Um, if you're already way far into this journey and you know you need ad operations, um, please reach out. Um, we can get you onboarded very quickly. Um, and I, I just look forward to anything that, you know, anyone who wants to reach out and who needs help. I, I look forward to help. I love helping people because I know what it feels like to be lost in this world. I've talked to hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of people, publishers, agencies. And again, that's that's why I do this is that they're, they're like, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad. Seriously, somebody's here to help me. Somebody can actually answer these questions. It's almost like I'm doing my taxes right now, <laughs> belated, but it's almost the, kind of like the tax world. You you need somebody to help you do that. And I want to be yeah. that. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, you are the compass for a lot of businesses and you show them true north. That's And I know I've often said, how can I get that into, you know, what I do with my last name, North? I don't, I don't know. I've thought about it a lot. The other place you can find me is Upwork, although you'll, you'll pay a fee on there. But if you want to see the feedback and my um, recommendations from there, uh, you can certainly go on there to see that. But you will pay an extra fee if you go directly through Upwork. So I suggest you go either to my website, LinkedIn. You can find me on LinkedIn as well. It's a slash Stacy North or slash AdOps Agency. Very good. How can we... Um... How can you uh, tell us about your experience on the show today? That's what I wanted to ask you. Oh, yeah. Oh, Dr. Bill, this has been so great. You know, when you reached out, I was like, I'm not an influencer. <laughs> but it's uh, it's part of me kind of putting myself out there. And I think uh, uh, businesses need to do that. So it's it's been a pleasure. You're just a, uh, a gem to talk to and, and make it very, very easy and open to to discuss all this stuff. So I love what you're doing. So it's, it's been great. Thanks so much. And I think you are an influencer. You have a niche that is under uh, represented in the world of uh, general knowledge. And so you're going to influence a lot of people with this talk today of how to get it done. Right. And I, I think that's a big influence. So thank you for doing that. I want to give you the final word before I come back and speak with you. So uh, go ahead and talk to the audience. They're eager to hear your final word. Uh, well, first of all, I just wanted to say thanks to Dr. Bill. Uh, I would just much like starting my own business. I never would have reached out or thought I could be on a podcast. Who, who needs to hear what I have to say? But I'm glad that I did this. I hope that it, I can at least help a couple of you figure out what you need to do with ad operations, your advertising, your marketing. Um, I like to say that no company is too small. Uh, I will help you. I will guide you. Like I said, free 30 minute consultation for anybody who reaches out. Please mention the Dr. Bill show. And um, I look forward to hearing from some of you. Thank you for doing that offer for folks today. No business is too small really does resonate with people going. I'm in the comfort zone. She'll talk yeah. to me no matter that's so right. uh, yeah, you're providing a real service. So I want to thank you for that. And uh, speaking of service, I want to offer everybody listening today, whether they're in my audience or Stacy's audience, capture freedom with our QR code. And I put that up there. And uh, if you take a picture of it, of course, you go somewhere. And where do you go? Of course, you go to my digital business card. All marketers should have a digital business card. So I'll use the ovu.me slash on passive. 
And uh, I like to promote two things really right now in my life. I've retired as a dentist, no more teeth. And I'm an influencer podcast host. And you can find my other podcast on drbillwilliams.tv. Also about the books I've written. I have some international bestsellers in dentistry, marketing, management. Uh, I was certified by J. Conrad Levinson. You might be interested as a guerrilla marketing uh, instructor. So I had a fun time working with Jay on that. You know, he invented the uh, many things. One of them is a marshmallow man, Pillsbury marshmallow man, Pillsbury Doughboy. Yes. And the uh, Marlboro Cowboy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Two icons. Very big icons. So he said in marketing, he said, be everywhere all the time. Very simple. <laughs> Just show up. Yeah, that's right. And now one of the things that I'm doing currently is working with AI technology, software products, SaaS products. And so you can make a trim URL of a small, a large, a large URL, make it small so you can get uh, custom codes. And you can also make a QR code out of your URLs. We give this away free. We always like to tell people to come and check it out because you can get all these for free. We have something brand new that you'll probably like to check out yourself, Stacy. It's a, a new product that's going to rival or be better than Google Analytics called O-Tracker. And if it's, if it's superior and less cost, you might like to use it, right? Absolutely. I'll have to take a look at that for sure because everyone's a little perplexed with GA4 right now. Yeah, well, we've got the answer. We, we, we feel like it's going to be the best. Oh, connect is something that I want to promote to the, the audience. It's a, a visual digital platform for podcasts, for live video conferencing, a lot of things. But the cool thing about it is it's got uh, noise suppression. So the barking dog will never bother you again. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> He's good at what he does. <laughs> yeah, but, we, but you, you'll hear it, but we won't. Yeah. So we've got, we've got some pretty good things going on there. So I just thought I would mention that for the audience. And uh, Stacy, it's been wonderful having you on the Influencer Podcast. You're an excellent guest and shared so many valuable tips. So thanks for being here. And I look forward to uh, keeping up with you and how you're doing. Yeah, Hope you thanks. can scale big. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. All right. Well, this is Dr. Bill Williams saying goodbye on the Influencer Podcast, and we'll be back with you on Friday. Take care, guys.